<laughs> that forced him to break off. It's kind of bizarre seeing a bomber taking on, well, a light bomber taking on interceptors. I'm not getting much pain out of it. See, it's easy to panic because you're getting attacked from all sides, but when you look at your shield quadrants, you think, hey, I'm taking no damage. And everything is fine with the world. Just gotta keep them in my sights. Force him to break. And now get behind him. And turn around to match him. I've often wondered, is it easier to play the game with a joystick? Because I'm, I'm no good with joysticks, I prefer the mouse. Maybe because I played Freelancer first, I don't know. But it seems a lot of people have a hang up about playing it with a joystick. Okay, I'm basically going to go for the turrets now. And we're almost out of Phoenix Fives. Okay, I'm going to call in support. Roger, sir. On our way. <laughs> Get away. Get some more missiles to use. Um, we're in no rush. I mean, it's not like these guys are going to jump out. Far from it. They're, they're just going to loiter around once they've reached their waypoint. Okay, that'll do. Now let's turn to face support. Is that it? Well, I'm blocky. Nope, nope. It's going under me, I see. Okay. Go on. And now we turn really slowly because support is docked. Is that dead in the water or something? Anyway, we got our first Phoenix 5 refill. Rearming complete, sir. Thank you. And bombs away. pair of bombs and we finish this off with lasers and you sir you seem to have an issue with uh, me destroying all your friends an issue that can be quite easily worked out by destroying you wow see this I enjoy this level because you know there's no nasty surprises or anything the only surprise is that the enemy fighters are just so effective, ineffective against your shielding. Which um, adds up to a nice opportunity for some kills. Now we've just got to clear this little zone around uh, the jump node. So I'm going to speed up time compression. Just boost over there. We don't need shield power really either, so a bit more to engines. Okay, and let's take that down. So you can dodge this fire quite easily by diving up and under. Keep the area secure until our freighters have arrived. Easy enough, I don't think there's any surprise wings coming in. And you can tell by the triumphant music that uh I think we've won this mission. Show about beta 1 though. You will be missed. Um, you can send in. Oh yeah, there they are. Area is secured. Return to base. Okay, will do. And that is why I love the Athena. Brilliant fighter and passable transport bomber. Well, brilliant transport bomber, actually. So, but the trouble is, situations like this so rarely crop up. You don't get much uh, opportunity to engage the pure power that such a balanced fighter bomber brings to the battlefield. Excellent work. The area has been secured and no hammer of light ships escaped. 
Your persistence in accomplishing your objectives is to be commended. Yep. Um, primary hit. Secretary hit. Assists. One. Kills. Yep. That's great. Terran Intelligence has spent the last two weeks analyzing flight data from the Tombaugh Station attack. The data on the Sheevan Lucifer has been given special attention. Intelligence believes the Sheevans were tracking the captured Tyrannus cruiser through subspace to the station. Interesting. Intelligence doesn't know how the Sheevans tracked the Tyrannus escort, but they've got a team of engineers trying to figure it out. They're also analyzing the shield system on the Lucifer. Unlike the shields on the Sheevan fighters and bombers, the shield appears impervious, not merely resistant, to all of our weapons. It'd be nice to have some kind of scale there. With the loss of Tombaugh Station, the Sheevans have gained control of the Ribos subspace node. Oh dear. That leaves only two subspace jumps between the Lucifer fleet and the Vasudan homeworld. Hmm. We must defend Vasuda Prime. Not only is it the humane thing to do, but it's in our own interests. If the Sheevans gain control of that system, it will be a short walk to Earth itself. That doesn't sound good. While their proximity to Earth is cause for concern, we have no reason to believe the Sheevans know the location of our homeworld. There are dozens of star systems off the Ribos node, and the Sheevans will likely have to examine them all. It is obvious, however, that they are narrowing it down, and we can't afford to give up one more inch. The Lucifer-class destroyer was last sighted in the Ribos system, leading us to believe that Antares is the focal point for the next Sheevan offensive. We're going to move the Galatea and its fleet to the Beta Aquilae system, in case the Sheevans decide to attack Vasuda Prime through there. Command is sending another Orion-class destroyer, the GTD Bastion, to the Antares Remember system that to help one? us with the blockade. But for the time being, we're the only defense. That was the ship we transferred to for a couple of missions. I am Ooh. pleased to announce we have two new weapons to use against the Sheevans. The Hercules Heavy Assault Fighter Yay. and the Synaptic Cluster Bomb. Ooh. You may study these in the tech room. They will prove very useful. Wait for it to do its thing. Report in 20 minutes for your mission briefing. Yeah, this thing isn't very useful. Just like the Piranha in Free Space 2. It's meant to be a kind of like portable flak weapon. But it just doesn't do enough damage and isn't accurate enough to reflect that. It's meant to be, you know, equipped on bombers and say a fighter wing's heading towards you. Fire at the fighter wing and it's meant to theoretically take them out. Trouble is, it does pittance of damage. So. Yeah. In order to protect Vasuda Prime, the GTD Galatea will be moving from Antares to Beta Aquilae. Alpha and Beta wings will provide escort. The sentry guns surrounding the jump node were severely damaged in the recent Hammer of Light attack. Alpha wing will inspect the sentry guns to determine if they are salvageable. Beta wing will provide cover. The Galatea will jump into Antares, reset its coordinates, then jump to Beta Aquilae. Lately, the Hammer of Light has been attacking all ships passing through the jump node. It is your responsibility to destroy all enemy ships that you encounter. And it usually is. After the Galatea jumps to Beta Aquilae, you will be contacted by the Detulia installation in the Antares system. There, you will receive your briefing and move on to your next mission. Intelligence has specifically requested hmm. you and your wing for these missions. Good luck, pilot. Okay. Let Galatea until it jumps. It's sentry guns. Now, this is actually... It should be a harder mission than one way with the asteroid field paving the way. But Tenderizer is actually easier considering the Galatea doesn't bug out. Now, this is what I was talking about. Uh, my mother, rather mealy-mouthed uh, speech about you know, the meat and potatoes of the campaign, the meat being the Avenger cannon, the potatoes, depending on your taste, is either the Apollo, the Valkyrie, or the Hercules. I, for the Hercules, I, I, I generally go with firepower over maneuverability. Uh, so, yeah, this is a really great fighter to have around. Stands up to a lot of punishment. Only a couple of situations where I recommend the Valkyrie over it generally intercept missions and also when dealing with a certain Sheevan fighter which shall enter the scene um, a few missions from now.